Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome today to our second sustainability webinar, Innovate with Sustainable Packaging for a Circular Economy. This follows our first webinar from early September, where we talked about taking positive climate action with sustainable packaging. My name is Vera Bach, and I'm the Sustainability Manager for UPM Raflatak in the EMEA region, and I'm working with customers and brand owners towards a sustainable future with sustainable packaging with self-adhesive labels. And now, uh, before I go on with more details, um, let me welcome my colleague Ona Koski. Um, Ona, could you please introduce yourself? Yeah, hello all. Um, really nice to be here today. Uh, my name is Ona Koski and I'm a sustainability manager at UPM Rafflatak as well. The reason why I'm, why I'm here today is uh, that I have been hands-on on circular economy and packaging recyclability already a while. And during the last uh, few years I have really seen the dramatic switch um, on the interest level of people. They want to know more and they want to uh, have recyclable packages. Perfect. Great to have you here, Una. Welcome today. So now, before we start discussing in more detail, let me shortly introduce you all to the agenda for today. First, I will give a short introduction to circular economy so that we then in the second part can zoom in on circular economy for packaging exactly. And in the middle part, Una and I will discuss together about specific packaging examples like this one, for example, and what does that mean in terms of recyclability for the packaging. And after that, I will uh, share solutions across the label value chain for waste that arises. And um, in the end, we'll have enough time for a live Q&A uh, after the conclusion that we do. But now I'd say let's just jump, jump right in. Why do we need a circular economy? Let's first think about the economic system that we've had already for a very long time, the linear economy. The linear economy means using virgin raw materials, using those for the production of new products that can be sold and consumed then by, um, by, by consumers. And uh, then finally, the products are incinerated or landfilled. And this really is a one way street of take, make and waste. And this is not a sustainable way into the future. That's why we need a circular economy. And the Ellen MacArthur Foundation has um, defined three principles of a circular economy that need to be fulfilled to really bring um, our economic systems into the future. And those three, um, three principles are designing out waste and pollution, keeping products and materials in use, and also regenerating natural systems. And then now let's look specifically um, how to keep materials in use with recycling and also to reduce pollution. Using virgin raw materials um, for products really um, uses a lot of energy, but also creates greenhouse gas emissions with that. And then if you look at recycling and you recycle packaging in basically any product, then you can reduce the pressure on virgin raw materials, you reduce the energy need, and you also reduce the CO2 emissions across the whole value chain. And that really makes um, recycling a positive climate action. In the webinar today, uh, we are looking at widening the scope that we've started already in the first webinar when uh, we talked uh, of taking positive climate action mainly from the points of resource efficiency and also using renewable raw materials to replace fossil-based products. Um, now, Una, moving on to the second point in our agenda, what does circular economy mean for packaging exactly? Uh, yeah, thanks for the question. So. Moving forward uh, in a circularity of packaging, we need to change the whole packaging value chain, but we also need to change the habits of us as a consumers. Uh, first of all, um, maybe the easiest part to do is that we really must avoid unnecessarily packaging and reduce uh, the material usage. So we simply need to stop, stop uh, over packaging stuff. Uh -huh. and also uh, optimize the resource use. Uh, and then in addition to that, we, as, as you said, we need to switch the raw materials uh, from the fossil to um, recycled raw materials or um, um, sustainable sourced renewable raw materials. And then going on, um, what we can do next is that um, we, we can use more reusable containers in uh, those applications where it makes sense uh, for the users and also then uh, from the um, environmental impact point of view. So, uh, for instance, some takeaway solutions could be reusable in the future. And continuing from that, uh, 
Uh, really last but not least, uh, we need to dramatically increase the recycling. We must capture um, the value of the raw material that we are today losing. So that's uh, simply the cycle for uh, packages. And okay. in a really uh, the best uh, reutilization allows the valuable raw material. Um, and it can also then lower the environmental footprints, like in, in case of plastics, recycling can reduce the carbon footprint almost 40% in comparison to virgin. Okay, very nice. So thanks for bringing the circular economy of packaging closer to us and 40% is already quite a bit of, of savings that you have when you recycle materials. Then uh, the focus today is on this recycling of packaging. And um, Una, can you maybe explain to all of us how packaging gets recycled? And is it actually the same for all, all types of packaging? Uh, yes. So here uh, on the slide, we see a very typical um, packaging materials and packaging streams. We have a PD bottle, we have a HDP bottle, cardboard box, uh, glass, and uh, a glass bottle and aluminium can. All of these materials uh, can be recycled today. Um, those can be mechanically recycled, which means that with heat and pressure, uh, these uh, materials are turned back into uh, valuable raw materials. Uh, plastics also can be uh, chemically recycled, which is currently developing quite fast. So that is a complementary uh, recycling method for plastic, specifically for plastic waste to um, reach the uh, higher recycling targets. Uh, and then we, we are lacking some of the streams in this picture we don't cover today, but for, for instance, for bio waste, there is um, organic recycling in place but that's not on the scope today. Okay, thanks, Una. So there's quite a few different streams for packaging, even if we already include some here, uh, exclude some here. And we'll have a look at some concrete packaging examples already later on with, um, with the assessment of packaging recyclability. But before, could you maybe define recyclability for us so that we do share the same understanding? Yes, I can. And um, well, to claim some product is recyclable, it doesn't mean that um, it just need to get recycled, it's more. It has to really follow and, and fulfill the following requirements. So first of all, the material has to be collected. Um, and after that, it has to be um, sorting in place. So you have to be able to separate the different material streams we saw in the previous picture uh, in the different boxes. Uh, and after that, of course, there has to be the reprocessing um, for that material. Um, and then the quality of that reprocessed material has to be good enough to have applications, new products and packaging where you can put it uh, or use the material. And all of this plus, uh, all of this has to be scalable and also economically feasible so that you can call something um, recyclable. And, okay, uh, thanks. And so really all these five, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and maybe a comment that one challenge today, why not all packages are yet meeting this um, recyclability definition is that there is a very big variety of, of combination of materials, uh, different packaging types, uh, colors, etc. So um, there are things to change for the future. Okay, definitely. That's a future that we have to work to um, together. So interesting that all these five things have to be um, have to be uh, really kind of in in place, especially the scale of the economic fe economically feasible that might not be uh, relevant or not, not, might not be working for everything today. So if we look at recyclability now, the recycling processes you shared, what is the what is driving packaging development to have as much possible as 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 much as possible recycled according to this definition? Uh, yeah, so of course um, the climate change uh, is there uh, and it doesn't go away itself. Um, then we have the resource scarcity and the waste issue. And we need to actively change the system to be able to impact on those. And also regulators around the world have notified that. So we are starting to see a lot of new legislation that's, that is um, uh, 
putting in place to change uh, the system we have today. And if I go uh, for the EU examples, um, uh, just re recently there was a single-use plastic directive put in action um, and the aim of that is for instance to re reduce the usage of unnecessary um, uh, single-use applications or and also uh, tackle the littering. Uh, then another one that is really uh, close relations with packages is packaging and packaging waste directive uh, and that is then setting a requirements uh, for the recyclable packaging and, uh, as we can see here, also um, putting recycling targets for different uh, materials and packages in place. And if we take an example, we already see that cardboard and, and paper has been relatively good recycling rates uh, today, but even uh, they, they are facing a big challenge to uh, increase that uh, up to 85 percent and we also uh, see from the targets that the plastic packages has to catch up um, to reach the 55 percent by 2030. So that is one driver. Absolutely, so legislation um, seems to see kind of recycling, recyclability as a hot topic, uh, setting these very concrete targets to 2025 and 2030, actually not that far away. So. How does then the packaging industry take action on recycling and recyclability? Because I assume there's a lot of changes to be to be done, and um, how does that work? Who takes care of that? Yes, um, so you're right. It's not only the legislative uh, re regulators changes that are happening, but uh, different associations and, and brands are taking actions as well. And one uh, quite a typical way it has been uh, handled today is is having um, or putting out new guidelines for packaging recycle or design uh, package for recycling. And and few to mention association like APR um, or Resuclass are there giving a voice um, for the recyclers and inviting all on the value chain to participate on the discussion and decision making. Uh, and then uh, brands like Nestle or Lidl, they are putting out guidelines that what they need so that they can um, design recyclable packaging. Uh, but as we know that things are now developing quite fast, not all of these guidelines are, um, are harmonized yet. Um, so. Uh, we might also today do something that doesn't pay off uh, in the future, but we are looking the path together. And um, uh, what I see a need for the future is that these guidelines really get a bit more harmonized and as well that we will have testing methods then to show uh, or measure the recyclability of different packages. And, and this is also a reason why we, uh, UPM Ruffalo, are participating in this forum because nobody uh, cannot do this alone. No, no one has um, uh, holi like enough holistic view alone. So we really have to have the collaboration between companies inside of the packaging value chain. Sounds good, Una. Thanks, and great to see that that we are present there as well. So, um, if we move from here now to agenda point three regarding uh, packaging recyclability and how to evaluate. Um, packaging recyclability with adhesive, with self-adhesive labels. Um, before we actually move on to concrete examples, I want to share a little bit about recyclability um, and how we can see packaging recyclability. Um, could you move one slide maybe for me? Yes. Ah, perfect. Thank you. Um, so packaging recyclability is not just a yes and no assessment. So something is not either fully recyclable or not recyclable at all but you actually have varying degrees to which packaging can be recyclable. And in this, labels do matter. So the choice of a self-adhesive label can actually have an impact on the recyclability. It can either improve or lower the recyclability. But the very good news is in only very few cases um, can, it, can, make a, can a label make a package non-recyclable. Typically, that's only the case when the main packaging material is not recyclable. And um, now, of course, the easy thing to say when we look at labels, seeing that that has an impact, is why not just use label? Why why not use not la no labels at all? So, if we entertain that thought for a minute, is that true? No labels, no problems. 
So just an easy example. Think about getting up in the morning and uh, you get into the shower and then you grab your, uh, your bottle to wash your hair and you actually put body lotion on your head because there's no label on the package. So you don't really know what you're actually putting putting on your head. So um, the packages look similar and you wouldn't know how to identify those. Blank packaging from a recyclability perspective might actually be the best ones, but then wouldn't it even be better to not have packaging at all? And actually both is really unrealistic in the modern world that we live in today. And uh, we really need to find a good way to make sustainable packaging work for, for what we do with, uh, with basically the world today. Um, as we do need packaging, Self-adhesive labels are actually a really good choice. And you will see that packages with self-adhesive labels are typically recyclable unless the main packaging material is not recyclable. And um, maybe, Ona, we can get a bit more concrete into this topic now going to the examples. But before that, maybe what are the needs for packaging when it comes to recyclability? Yeah, um, I think it's good to start from... Um, <laughs> remembering or reminding ourselves that what is uh, the other functionalities need from the packaging. So uh, really, firstly, and, and most importantly, package is there to protect something. Uh, it's uh, also there uh, avoiding a uh, food waste. So um, a simple example that if you uh, lose or put a slice of meat in, in, in the bio waste, you will actually create as much emissions that it has been taken to create that package. So packages are needed there uh, to protect and save the content. Uh, but then, uh, and, and recyclability is uh, one of the functionalities that is now needed for the packages. And um, if you look that more in details, uh, there are different elements that can influence on the recyclability of the package. It can be uh, the color of the package. So dark colors are not as, as well uh, recyclable typically. Uh, and then it can be the shape, shape of the bottle or even um, the how, how empty you can, um, oh, the empty ability, how empty you can make the package. So um, first of all, you lose money when you are throwing a the product you are buying uh, away, but then also you are uh, causing uh, impurities for the recycling stream if you have a lot of material inside of that. Um, so those kind of elements. And of course, the material you choose for the main, uh, main packaging is, is typically the first um, mm -hmm. thing that defines where and how the material can be recycled. Okay, good. We will cover that also with the concrete examples. But now before we jump into those, still um, one question that we often get is, what about the label size? So I can see, of course, lots of different bottles in the market and they have different size labels. So does that have an influence? Uh, yes, it, it may have. And, um, and for that reason, so if the uh, label is very big, it can sometimes um, cause issues for the material sorting when it's uh, not made from the same material as the package. And for that reason, um, uh, most of the guidelines are uh, recommending to have a label size between 40 to 70 percent of the surface area to, to kind of minimize the risk, the material ending up in the wrong stream. Okay, sounds good. And now let's really go to the to the main part of looking at concrete packaging examples and their recyclability. I have here this uh, mayonnaise bottle. This is actually a PET container with a PP cap and a PP label with a wash off adhesive. Can you tell us about the recyclability of this bottle? I have also the same bottle here. Um, yes. Uh, so. Uh, First of all, no issues uh, in expected in the sorting. So the material is sorted correctly based on the main material, the PET, on, on, on this. And then um, the whole bottle, including the cap and the label, is shred in the small species. Uh, and then in PET recycling, there is a hot wa wash process in place uh, that is designed to remove impurities. Um, and this, uh, this time where we have the wash off adhesive, it can remove uh, the label from the PD and leave uh, pure and uh, clean <laughs> PD flakes behind. So uh, in that way, the label can uh, increase the recyclability of the container itself. Uh, and after uh, after it's removed in the washing, it will be um, going to sink float where the cap and the label is floating in top of the water and then the PD is sinking and those 
uh, using that they can be separated. And uh, we have we have this wash-off solution that has been tested according to the uh, uh, existing testing methods, uh, like APR is providing those and EPPP as well. Okay, sounds good. So PET, PET is one of the developed plastics recycling processes. If we now take a different type of packaging, I have here um, a cardboard uh, folding box that has uh, Q-tips uh, inside or cotton buds. I guess is the better word. Um, and then we have the um, a label uh, that closes basically the package. And that's a Roughnex Plus paper label on this cardboard box. Um, how is that in terms of recyclability then? Yes, it's, it's very well recyclable. Um, um, can you elaborate maybe a bit on that for me? <laughs> of course I can. Um, well, uh, as, as we saw on the target, target slide, the recycling rate for paper and cardboard is already uh, quite okay. Um, and, and there has been an established recycling stream for cardboards and papers already a long time. So they have been uh, uh, learned um, how to deal with um, possible impurities like, like typically the inks or, or then even the adhesives and, and those can be sorted out in the process. So uh, this package with the paper label is, is, is fully recyclable and it can be turned back to tissue paper or new cardboard or something else. Okay, perfect. That sounds good. And now then um, moving on in terms of plastics as well. You've seen this bottle already before. So this is an HDPE shampoo bottle with a PP cap and a forest PE um, with standard acrylic adhesive. And we saw this earlier already. So um, before asking about recyclability, what I actually love about this package is um, the label because the forest PE label that it uses is a plastic label entirely made from renewable resources, in this case wood. So um, we did talk about this product also in the first webinar in early September. So if you haven't seen that, um, the webinar is still available today. So you can have a look at it at, at that and go through our web, web website. Um, but maybe for today, then let's concentrate on the recyclability. So how do you see the recyclability for this package, Ona? Yeah, I really, uh, I'm a big fan of the forest PE label on it because it's from the renewable sources so taking the first step to get circular and, and what comes to recyclability it's good to mention and we often get that, get that question that is it the same way recyclable uh, than fossil based PE and yes it is um, so uh, and also if you look at the bottle uh, the label size is, is very good so we don't expect any issues on the sorting. And after the sorting, HDP bottles are also getting, uh, those are shred in small pieces. Uh, but after that, the process is, uh, is different in comparison to the PET example we had. So this HDPE material is not washed in a, in a hot wash. There is all, only a room temperature, really mild friction washing in place. Um, that is not designed to remove the labels. For that reason, uh, we have been looking into um, more compatible labels that can go with the material without not causing an issue for the process. And in this case, as we have the PE label um, and the acrylic adhesive, we have been tested that in accordance to the uh, standards again, that it can go with the material um, without not causing um, issues on the recyclate itself. So that's the process okay, then, for this one. Sounds good. Then one follow-up question on this that I have. If I would change the label from a plastic label to a paper label, how the, would that change the recyclability of this HDPE bottle? No, it would be still recyclable because the main material is recyclable and it, it gets into the system. However, uh, the paper label could have some impact on the yield, meaning uh, the quality or quantity of the recyclate if it's not removed in the uh, friction washing. Partly it will be removed there, but uh, it may, might, may have some impact. However, today, um, as we had the PET example, uh, there is bottle to bottle recycling in place. So they are recycling it back to the kind of a clear solutions. But on the HDP case, uh, that is not in place and they uh, rather uh, the material goes to piping or fences where then uh, those kind of small impurities are not um, causing that much issues. 
Okay, perfect. Thanks, Ona. Then I'd say let's move on to the next package. Yep. I have here um, a flexible packaging pouch that is a multi-material made of PP and PET, and it is labeled with the Roughnecks Plus paper label. How do you uh, see the recyclability of this one then? Uh, well, uh, this is a little bit more tricky uh, because the pouch itself is made from two different materials, um, PE and PT. Um, uh, sorry, PP and PET. Uh, there is no recycling stream for this today, so it it is not filling uh, that box in the recyclability definition. So it's often considered non-recyclable um, today. Of course, there is. Um, we see more of these kind of flexible packages on the market, and there is a lot of development on that area. But today, uh, we consider it, consider it um, non-recyclable or res less recyclable. However, in this package, there has been other uh, functionalities that has uh, play more role. For instance, the resource efficiency, and this is also how um, the label has been chosen for this one. So it's really resource optimized uh, Roughnext Plus label. Uh, with excellent um, uh, environmental performance, low carbon footprint. Um, uh, so the Roughnecks Plus with climate positive action is a really good choice for that kind of package. But okay, the label itself then... doesn't really change the fact that the package beneath is, uh, in yeah. this case, less recyclable. Yeah. Oh, thanks for that. Um, good to mention Roughnecks Plus. We actually covered that also, this quantified positive climate action, our first webinar. So if you haven't watched it, that recording is set is available. And maybe we come to our last package. And I don't have a proper rough attack example, so I basically grabbed something from my living room now. Um, we have here basically a bottle of wine. You did the same, good. So um, we have a bottle of wine with a wet strength uh, paper label, and this could easily be a glass jar with honey or jam or something. Maybe I should have taken a different one, but okay. Uh, wine bottles are very typical with glass. So how do you see the recyclability of um, glass bottles or glass containers um, with labels? Um, yes, I also had the uh, wine bottle, not the jar uh, of jam or anything like that. But if we have a glass container, uh, bottle or jar. Uh, the first thing to ask is that um, is there a reuse system for that? Because for glass bottles, um, uh, beer glass bottles or even wine glass bottles, there is reuse systems in place where they wash the bottle um, inside outside um, and then refill it. And in in those processes, we have uh, specific wash off labels to be designed to be uh, removed in the uh, uh, washing process taking in place. Uh, but in, in case the material or the bottle is not going into reuse, but it goes to recycling, then um, the label is not really impacting the process in any way. Because, I mean, well, the most important is to sort the class based on the color, and that, that is done, um, done in the process. And then after that, it's melted down uh, with really high temperature. So the label uh, is then going with the process without not causing an issue. Okay, sounds good. It's great to have these very concrete examples to make it very tangible regarding labels and packaging recyclability. There are quite a lot of things to consider, so we'll have a proper wrap up and also Q&A because I'm sure there's uh, there's questions about this as well. Um, recycling really is an essential part of, of um, creating a circular economy. Um, but before we open up for, for questions and wrap up, um, let's look at some concrete actions you can take along the packaging value chain as well. And what you can see here as well is the label value chain and there's uh, waste across that value chain. If we start now from the back, you see the consumption of um, label packages and then their packaging recyclability as discussed today is um, highly important, of course. Then let's jump to the beginning of the value chain where we have the raw material side. And here, recycled content can be used for both paper and also plastic labels. So this is where the circle basically comes to, um, to the front again so that material is reutilized. And this really supports the demand for recycled content in packaging to do this. All good? Yep, go ahead. Good. And then um, one important part, of course, is the middle as well, where um, we are, um, as Rafflertag, part of the value chain, our label printer customers are, and then in product labeling, retailers, brand owners, packers are also part of the value chain. And there's a lot of label waste coming up there as well with the liner and also the, the matrix and mixed waste of, of labels. And this, uh, for this middle part, we really offer our rough cycle services 
to recycle different types of label waste. And we have done that for uh, many years already, and we've increased capacity bit by bit also for recycling. But uh, our industry actually needs more solutions than only just one company going ahead and really offering recycling services. So for this reason, we have also co-founded this um, C-Lab initiative that you see on here. And we are, um, we are working in there as a key collaborator uh, to boost especially matrix recycling, but also uh, liner recycling even more than we have done in the past years. And on rough cycle, we won't cover too much today due to time, but we will have a webinar in Q1 2021. And so any questions uh, will be covered there as well. We can go a lot deeper than, than we can do today here. Then another, go ahead, that's fine. <laughs> another collaborative effort important to us as Raflatag is the Anne MacArthur Foundation already mentioned in the beginning. Um, we have actually signed up to the global commitment in the new plastics economy of the uh, Anne MacArthur Foundation. And our commitment actually stands alongside um, more than 450 other stakeholders, including major brands like Unilever, L'Oreal, Nestle, too many to count, let's say it's like more than 450. Um, all of us, we have made voluntary commitments to eliminate unnecessary plastic packaging and also to achieve the target of really this 100% reusable, recyclable and compostable packaging by 2025. And El MacArthur Foundation really gives a basis for collaboration as well to find solutions across the value chain. Like Una said as well, it's a must to work together. We can't just go that way alone. And um, on this, we're ready to collaborate with you to achieve that circular economy because we really can't do it by ourselves and uh, you can't either. So it's good to kind of uh, stay connected on these topics. Then additional to services that we offer along the value chain, we also have, um, of course, our product ranges and we offer um, label products to support the market on the move to circular and um, also sustainable packaging overall. Our uh, smart choice port focuses here, as you can see, on reducing raw material use on utilizing recycled content and also replacing fossil content with renewables, whether it's paper as a renewable sustainably managed resource or also um, then plastic labels that come from a renewable resource. Additionally, then we have our, um, our UPM Rough Attack Smart Circle range where we look into creating products that enhance the recycling um, of packaging. And in that case, we discussed already today the wash of adhesive, for example, for this, uh, for this mayonnaise bottle that you've seen earlier. And then um, coming to our last part, basically, um, Una, may I ask you for a short conclusion before we move on to the Q&A? Could you recap for us uh, the main points of labels and packaging regarding recyclability? Yeah, for sure. So um, if we first look at labels and packaging um, together, um, that has to be uh, recyclable. So uh, as mentioned many times, packages with self-adhesive labels are typically recyclable if the main packaging material is recyclable. That's uh, the first point. Then um, recycling compatibil com compatible. So label is part of a package and it has to be therefore considered in terms of uh, recycling compatibility with the um, packaging material uh, in the recycling stream that it ends up. Uh, and then really improving output. Uh, so as mentioned, labels can improve the quality and the quantity of recyclate material. So it can improve the yield. So we can get more recycled material to be used in packages or in our labels. Um, and then we really require um, have bird view, having a holistic view, what happens uh, in different uh, value, uh, different stages of the value chain, what are the needs for the packaging from the functionality point of view, for the recyclability point of view. So um, we have to think of all of those uh, elements also when selecting the um, best um, self-adhesive label choice for that package. Uh, and uh, then as, as we were discussing today, um, things are are changing now, which is really uh, great. Things are moving uh, quite fast from the legislation side of you uh, side uh, side, as well as uh, from the packaging design guidelines are developed. So uh, there is action on the regulator side on the packaging value chain to really uh, change things, and we are part of that uh, journey, as 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 you uh, as we have explained our solutions and our um, ambitions on that. 
And yeah, really, it cannot be highlighted too much, but we cannot really solve this alone. I cannot uh, solve it even if I stop using any packages in my personal life, but I need you there. Uh, we need uh, each other as a companies. So we have a challenge, but together we can, we can find uh, perfect solutions for that. Sounds good. Thanks, Ona, for the for the for the conclusion and for the for the summary as well. And um, if you do want to dive deeper on this topic, we are ready to support you and work with you. And um, after the Q and A, we'll also share um, Ona and my my email address and uh, share how you get in touch with us. But now we'll jump actually to the questions. And I've just uh, I have it on my iPad now here, so I've just received uh, the questions that have come in during the during the live session now. So, um, Ona, are you ready? Let's jump in, maybe. I think so. Okay, so the first question I have here then, um, and uh, the first question here is, do we have a, do you have a wash-off label with PET face material? Could you elaborate on that? Why we, why we don't have it, I'd say so. Hey, you, you gave a teaser. So yes, we don't have that, uh, but um, we have the wash-off combined with PE and PP and papers because those, um, like, like explained in PET recycling where the hot wash is uh, taking place, uh, uh, we need the wash off and then why it's not with PET is because then all of the PET including the flakes would go uh, sinking with the inks uh, and with the adhesive and because they want to um, first of all make clear bottles uh, out of that they don't want to have the inks uh, and the adhesives typically as part of they want only the PET flakes and that's why we don't have the PET um, material with wash off because it's um, not yet um, having any solutions where it could help. Sounds good. Thanks, Una, for that. There's a lot of questions about plastics recycling, so I'll just um, pick another one. Um, did you check recyclability of the PE bottle with the PE label at one of the institutes, like Reciclas, for example? So is there any uh, testing that we have done regarding PE, PE, PE label materials? Yeah, we have. We follow the APR testing guidelines for that um, to test the compatibility. Okay, sounds good. Um, and then, okay, um, I have a question also. This is about um, PP um, recycled now. Can you please expand on the possibility of the value chain for recycled transparent PP and also recycled food approved PP? Do you see that these markets will develop um, in the EU in the coming years? You said PP. Yes. PP, yes, polypropylene. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, well pointed. Today we were not talking about too much on uh, PP. Um, however, it was combined with the, with the HD, HDP because the recycling, uh, oh, they are separated. So PP goes in own fraction and HDPE goes in, in other one. But the recycling uh, process as such is uh, is very similar for HDPE and PP today. Um, however, PP is a little bit less uh, recycled still today. So we, it is developing um, as well. Uh, and how uh, today, at, uh, at least in Europe, it, if you recycle HDPE or PP, it's not typically suitable for food packages because of the uh, risk of contamination um, in the value chain because there is no hot wash um, and also the temperatures are a bit lower. So there is uh, multiple risks for uh, and too little information available. So it's uh, for those reasons, it's not uh, accepted uh, on food packages. However, um, well, chemical recycling be, can be one solution for that um, to provide, as we have already one um, recycled content label from um, uh, chemically recycled material, and, and those can be then uh, suitable in, in food packages. Uh, so chemical recycling for HTP and PP can be one way to bring uh, food quality grades on the market. Um, also, well, I don't st I, I don't guess uh, more about what about then the mechanical recycling, how far they will get with the HDP and PP in the future. That will be seen, but still few questions uh, open in that. Yeah. 
Sounds good. Uh, then I have a question on, um, do you have labels made of bioplastic? Could you elaborate a little bit on this topic of bioplastic maybe in general? Yes, um, so bioplastics uh, can mean two things. Two things. It can be uh, bio-based, so originating from renewable sources, um, and it can be biodegradable. So often those there might be some uh, mixing of those terms. But yes, we have materials that are originating from renewable sources. We had the forest film um, in this we have the PE label, but we also have a PP label uh, out, made of that material. So uh, there we, we have been using um, a residue from the pulping process, and that is turned into a renewable naphtha, which is then uses, uh, used as a raw material for our, uh, our film further. So yes, we have those. Uh, at the moment, uh, we don't have biodegradable films, uh, biodegradable plastic films in our range. But those and exist on the market, looking, we don't have it. Yeah, exactly. And we're not looking to develop really solutions with biodegradable films, um, as we we'll rather make the packaging circular and don't just dispose of it through then basically um, industrial composting with a biofilm. So um, then there's a clarification question on the solution with uh, the recyclability for the shower package, the, just the one that you had in your hand mm -hmm. with a forest film. So with a PE forest, can you confirm the end issue if, if it, it is not necessary to use a wash glue? So would it be necessary to use a wash off glue with this package? When? Um, I, I didn't maybe get the question. It Exactly. I think okay. The, the question was about clar clarifying the answer that we gave on the recyclability yeah. of this um, this shower, uh, the shower package with the PE forest, and um, if we can confirm how the recyclability works, and um, if it's not necessary to actually use a wash of adhesive in this. Yeah. Uh, today, as mentioned, uh, there is not the hot wash off process in place um, in HDP recycling. So um, the conditions are too mild to be able to fully remove the labels in the friction washing that exists on the HDP recycling. For that reason, um, the wash-off adhesives uh, on the market today are not um, putting any extra on it. But it and also, um, as I mentioned, the material usage of uh, HDP is today uh, somewhere else than in packaging. So also from that reason, it's um, it, this label can go with the packaging for the use today. Yeah. And I don't say Sounds that good. it, it cannot like, change yeah. for tomorrow, because there might be new solutions and also some kind of bottle to bottle recycling for HDP in the future when uh, the needs might be different. Yeah. I mean, that's why the, I think, collaboration across the value chain, chain is so important so that we can see where the recycling develops further and which levers we should actually move to make sure that we get the best results from the recycling. The second part of the question I will quickly answer, uh, do we prepare a PDF file for all cases, HDP, EPP and such with material solutions? Um, yes, we actually have. Um, it's more of internal material for now so that our sales organization can guide our customers and brand owners to support you uh, with exactly those solutions specific to your cases so that they can guide you because um, as you realize, this is a really complex topic and then it's important to really go down to the details and not just give a very general recommendation, but we do have those types of information available now as well. Um, yeah. And then uh, there's Maybe I, if anything I to add. To that. Yes. So, so today Please. we gave quite a general examples, uh, assuming, for instance, that there is the recycling stream uh, for that material in that country in place, but that can vary. So that's why it's also important to have uh, the local connection and discuss um, what, are, what is the situation in, in that specific region or specific area? Yeah. And that's the biggest challenge, of course, for all brand owners today, that if you uh, have one package, for example, for the whole of Europe, then it doesn't mean that the recyclability or the recycling is actually the same in each and every country. And that makes it really tricky. And that's why we use our whole network across the, the, the globe uh, to basically support with, with knowledge on that. So we have a large network behind what Una and I are talking about today. We have quite many people involved in this in the organization. And that is uh, exactly then there's a question that I'm afraid. Yeah, yeah, exactly the point where the harmonization is needed. For Absolutely. all of us. For Not France, just for us, uh, for all of us. Exactly. Uh, for us as a material producers, uh, 
and so forth. Yeah. And uh, then I have one question that I'll just put it out there, but I can't answer it because I don't know the details of it in case you have any comments, but otherwise I'm afraid we have to um, ask, uh, ask uh, another part of the industry about this. What about bottle closures for wines, cork versus screw cap? Um, recycle, recycle best practice with cork and screw cap. Any insights from you, Ona, or should we skip that from here? Yeah, uh, no, no detailed info, uh, especially if there is a difference between those. So have to look a little yeah. bit deeper. Most likely they will we get have... rejected from the material, but that's a, that's a pure guess uh, based on my knowledge on glass recycling. So that's maybe something to check. Yeah. We do have some um, wine experts in our company yes. as well, and maybe we can kind of connect you to those. So if you want to go deeper on that question, please feel free to follow up with us afterwards and we'll just make sure that we'll get the right info for you as you need it. Um, then there was something else. There's one question about having PE sleeve quality for HDPE bottles. I'm not quite sure I understand the questions. If there is any development on having PE sleeve quality for HDPE bottles, is that anything you can comment on, Una? Does that make sense to you? Um, no, let's phrase it that way, that we are looking um, all kind of options that could support and help <laughs> the recycling. Uh, and of, yeah. of course, that, uh, that type of solution could be, of course, um, one, but no, no specific comments related to that one. Okay. Um, but there goes the same. If you have further interest, want to elaborate on the question, please feel free to get in touch with us afterwards as well. Um, and then there's another question on what do you use on a PP bottle? I think we've covered that already with mm. the discussion on the on the now HDP and of course now the first PP question. Um, so I think that's covered. And then we have one question that I'm not exactly sure about, but how about the energy use in the recycling process as to the carbon offsetting across different packaging options? So I'm not sure now if that's in, in terms of that, energy that, that, use. That is, uh, I, I think I get the question, but I, I would say that that is quite a big question uh, to answer since I think we start to get end of the, our time. Uh, but maybe really shortly that uh, typically if you compare the virgin uh, material and the mechanically recycled material, you see an improvement in the carbon footprint on, in all of the materials. It's not ex like I mentioned the plastic example for those, it's around 40 percent, a little bit less. Um, it's something else for the aluminium uh, or for glass, how much you save in comparison to virgin production. Uh, so, yes, typically there is a saving, but then I maybe the question was about comparing different material and that against each other. And that is too big question to cover today, but we can formulate some kind of further question uh, for a further answer for that afterwards. Yeah. And the same goes as well. If you want to elaborate a little bit more on the question, mm. we're happy to, to really be in touch and and help you along with that. And then a new question just came in as well. So that's the last one we'll cover. Uh, the question is on what is the solution for the differences between recycling facilities across Europe? EU legislation question mark? Also a huge question <laughs> to answer in the in the last one oh, as, as the last one. Um, yes, EU legislation is set um, in EU level, but the implementation is taking place in the countries. So we will see differences how the plastic uh, or the packaging and packaging waste directive is taking into action in different countries or how the single use plastic directive is implemented. So there will be variation on that. Um, but since all of that is currently quite much developing, um, I don't have any any examples for you. But we expect to see some differences, but I, I do hope that uh, the solutions are harmonized enough to allow the operations uh, across the Europe. And as Una said early on with this, uh, that's why we have also these collaborations from ourselves with these associations like the plastics recyclers in Europe, in North America, in different places in the world to discuss as well, because we do believe that recycling processes need to develop and they need to be harmonized in a similar way. We need to have requirements for different types of decorative techniques. So there's a lot of harmonization to be done that will not only rely on EU legislation or legislation in general, but um, actually all actors in the value chain need to work together to find uh, the best 
best possible solutions and I very likely everybody will have to move. It's not just saying about I'll do like I say, I'll do like I do today and then you have to change, but it's really finding a common ground uh, where to develop this whole this whole uh, recycling topic. Good. I think that was now all the questions that I've gotten through my iPad. I hope we didn't leave anything out in that case. Um, yeah. We are well then, on time. Um, looks good, doesn't it? So. Uh, then maybe, maybe the time for the very last slide that we have now. So when we conclude now the questions and answers, um, as we've said, you are welcome to get um, in touch with us. Um, really thank you for participating live today and sharing questions um, also with us here. Um, if there are any further follow-up questions, you're welcome to get in touch with us. Um, you've heard today about circular economy for packaging with self-adhesive labels and um, focusing especially on packaging recyclability. Uh, so the two important things that I want to leave you with kind of following from Ona, packages with self-adhesive labels are typically recyclable if the main packaging is recyclable. And never forget that there's other considerations outside of recyclability. So when it comes to carbon footprint functionality, there's lots of other things to consider to choose a label material and also a packaging material. Um, you likely realize very much now how complex the topic is, and that's why we're here to provide expert support to you. You're welcome to get in touch with your sales representative if you already have one at UPM Rafflertag. Visit our website, follow us on social media, and please also feel free to get in touch with Una and I directly if there's any specific questions that come to your mind later on or you want to follow up from today. So now, first of all, actually, I want to thank you, Ona, for joining me today. It's great to have you here, and thank you for taking all the questions that have come up as well. Thank you. It was uh, fun to be here today. I enjoyed it. I also enjoyed the questions. So thank you for uh, whoever sent those to us. And have a good day. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you all again for listening and engaging today. Take care. Stay safe. We're ready to collaborate. So feel free to get in touch with us. Bye bye.